Hi, it's Ed Butowski. So today, Thursday, we are seeing for the first time what the tax cut um, ideas out of this administration are going to be. And then it's going to go, obviously, and start being voted on and debated and discussed. Um, and I am all for tax cuts. I've said it for a long time that w this economy has been, <clears throat> really since 2007, in stagflation which means rising prices, although the government doesn't measure it properly, uh, rising prices, slow economic growth, um, you know, and we really have high, un, you know, from the standpoint of unemployment. And the only way to get out of that, and I've been saying this for a very, very long time, is to cut taxes across the board. Now, everybody would love to see more money in everyone's pockets, including corporations. But there's some unintended negative consequences around this and I think it's very important for everybody to understand this. So what you're looking at right now are the tax receipts that come into the United States government and this does not include state um, and it does include local uh, taxes either or city taxes. And you'll notice that every year since 75 with one small exception which was down uh, during the 07-08 uh, uh, liquidity crisis, you have seen an increase in tax revenue. There's probably another time uh, right here uh, during 2000 and 2001 and then 2002 and 2003. So a little bit more than I thought. But the bottom line is we have seen a huge move upward in the amount of money that comes into the federal government. That means we're paying more taxes. Everyone feels it. Now, this by itself is... You know, to me, it's a little concerning that we have that much revenue coming in. But more importantly, what does it mean when you add in what we spend? Because then it starts to get real interesting because the amount of money that we bring in is always, you know, should be always compared to what we need. All right? People don't really do that. You have to see how much do we have coming in and how much do we spend. And as a result of that, are we at a surplus or are we at a deficit? So let me you know, start to build on why this is so important, these tax cuts, and the short-term implications. So what you're looking at now, and I'm, I'm not the best at typing things in Word, so you'll see some spacing issues, um, but this is the deficit and surplus report. Now this is really important. This means how much money are we bringing in, subtract out, how much we spend, and we're either at a deficit or a surplus. And you can notice here that in 1998 through 2001, we were at a surplus. Right? Put politics aside, what's really crucial is that every time that we are at a deficit, that amount of money is added to our national debt. Now, that has a lot of implications to everybody in the world because the United States is the Pied Piper of the world economy. And if the United States is doing well and we're functioning and things are going great, the rest of the world does you know, really well. All right? I know that sounds, uh, there's some, some word for that where, where you know, we're somewhat thinking about just, you know, I don't want to call it nationalism and so on, but it's just a fact. The U.S. economy drives the world economy. And our economy has not been doing well for a long time. And now the question is, are we going to get tax cuts that are going to stimulate the economy? Well, I have studied this. And we always have all right, gotten more tax revenue about a year and a half to two years after we've seen cuts. That doesn't mean spending curtailed. But what's going to happen is we're going to see this number, this budget deficit number, for about a year and a half to two years, if everything goes through the way it's being proposed, or even close to how it's being proposed, we're going to see this budget deficit number go really high. And I mean really high, probably back up into the trillions. And what's going to happen and to, you know, when that does occur? Well, it's going to be added to our national debt. So hold on a second. Well, this is uh, one of my favorite uh, websites. Um, I know it sounds kind of nerdy, but it really is. It's the usdebtclock.org. And you can see right over here on the left, the U.S. national debt is at $20.5 trillion. And supposedly, I don't know if we do or not, but we pay interest on all that money. 
if interest rates go higher, okay, and, and that means on the longer term debt, but if interest rates go higher, um, that's a big problem. You know, if it goes back to what it normally was, uh, you know, that's about 5%. Well, that means we owe a trillion dollars in interest a year. That's about a third of the tax revenue we bring in. Now you're starting to understand the importance of this. So this affects everybody. And remember, when we have to add more money to the national debt, what we have to do then is borrow money from individuals or other countries. And that's one of the reasons we can't play hardball with a lot of different countries. I and mean, we borrow from countries you just wouldn't, you wouldn't believe we're borrowing from. We borrow from Russia. We borrow from Ecuador, which I, for some reason, I always think about Ecuador because of, uh, that's why Snowden, I think, went there at first. Um, I just thought to myself, why would he go to Ecuador? Well, Ecuador gives us money so we can function as a country. And we can't play hardball with them. We can't play hardball with a lot of countries because of how much debt we have. So it does matter. And some people say, well, our debt relative to our GDP, we're okay. Nonsense. It's the exact number that we owe money on is what matters. And if we keep raising that deficit and it keeps going higher and higher and it gets added to this debt, it's only going to get worse. And I don't see anything in sight that makes this number go lower anytime soon. So remember, we're not even generating enough tax revenue today to take care of our current expenditures. So why am I bringing this up? Expect the deficit number to soar. And as everyone's talking about tax cuts, understand tax cuts should, and I believe will, create a much stronger economy in the United States, and there'll be a multiplier effect, and then hopefully we'll start to see more tax revenue to offset our deficit. I don't like all the tax revenue. Nobody wants to see a lot of taxes. But this is exactly what you need to think about and know about what is happening right now. So we're going to sit back and say, yes, I want more money, $4,000 more for the middle class, uh, you know, more money for people you know, in other tax brackets, upper uh, you know, one percenters, they're still going to get hit and maybe even have that rise a little bit. Corporate taxes you know, being cut. But when that all happens... There's going to be a period of time where we'll see the deficit rise and we're going to print more money. And as a result of that, the money you have today will go not as far. Remember, when you print more of something or create more of something, the value of that, whatever it might be, it could be money, it could be a widget, it could be anything. The more of it that's printed or manufactured, the, the, because there's more supply of it, the value of it isn't as great. So any of the things I just went over, feel free to call me at any time, email me. Uh, just think it's important for everyone to understand what the long-term implications of uh, these proposals are. And you're probably not going to hear that very much between, you know, with the politicians and the talking heads on television. Um, and I wanted to make sure that it was communicated, at least from me. Thanks.